13 millimeter bolts. I'm going to use the half incher. There's another one down here that you can't see. All right, so look, it looks like I got all the transmission bolts out. Um, I probably didn't. I'm probably missing a couple, maybe one or two, um, but that's okay. Uh, so now what I need to do is just separate it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Sit back and enjoy. It's pretty heavy, so you gotta be careful when separating this too. I'm gonna get a pry bar to help push it off the uh, the valves. So be very, very, very careful when working on these flight services for mating these two together. If you don't do this right, you could scar, you know, the casing of either side, and it'll be a very bad day for you. And in this case, a very, very bad day for me because I don't have another one of these yet. So I'm gonna try to be very careful. Let's bring you in here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna find a little seam here somewhere. Here's the dowel right here. Try to get it in here very carefully and I won't be able to get it in there. And uh, probably remove this piece. This is a inspection hole. Try to get in here behind it and kind of work that doll out while wiggling. So take a look at this. Let's take it off the stand. So let's go down in here. All right, look at all that grease. That's, this is a brand new slave cylinder, by the way. Slave cylinder might be the problem. Uh, I don't see anything really wrong with the clutch kit itself. But we'll see. I'm sure, it's not supposed to be like this. All right, so in previous videos, I did a full breakdown on how to take this off, but 
There's the big bolt here, the long bolt, which is this one. You wanna make sure that this bolt goes back into that slot. Um, so, but there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, bolts that you need to remove to take off the shift tower and this whole process is an issue with the MTX 75 on its own and I already have videos out explaining how and why this fails but just as a brief you can now pull it out there's a pin in here right there that pin usually is broken on a lot of people's uh, shift tower and it makes it to where the shifter won't actually shift it'll just spin around and you won't have any access to your gears so this is usually like I would say from the focus that I've seen maybe 75% of the issue and the other 25 being there's actually something wrong with the transmission so good luck with that all right the next step is going to be to remove all of these bolts around the back half of the transmission uh takes a 10 millimeter socket we're going to remove all these bolts flip the transmission over and pull it off pull the bell housing off from the top uh and there's a guy out uh named david patience um, whose video I'll post or a link up here so you can check it out or over here so you can check it out. He does a really good job of explaining this and I'm kind of following from his video but I've obviously done this before to put in the um, LSD. So let's get all these off and then we'll proceed on. All right, so I've got the transmission bolts out. i got it flipped upside down and this is the way you should remove it. Um, most people want to try to remove it with the with the bell housing facing down. It's actually the wrong way. Uh, so right now, I'm working on prying up on the pry points to lift this bell housing out, and uh, we should get access to the innards of the transmission. And like that, it's out. All right, so first things first, we're gonna remove our basically brand new, well not basically, our brand new differential. And I'm gonna pick it up from the sides. I'll just take it out, just like so. I'm gonna set this down somewhere safe. All right, I'm gonna move the magnet. And this literally should not have much on it at all. Uh, and it doesn't. I'm gonna set this somewhere safe. All right, so the next thing is gonna be shift rail one and shift rail two. Gonna remove these and inspect them. Clean them up. Doesn't look like I need to replace these. And they are different links, so Make sure shift row one went here and shift row two went on the input shaft side. Right. Now I can try to take out the shift forks. And I'm gonna take these and have them um, checked out from a licensed mechanic to see if these are uh, in good shape. Here's this one. This went. This went in here like that. Right, so that's one.
two. down in the comment let me know down in the comment section what you think about these i don't know if you can get you a little close-up of them uh let's see come on there we go we'll get a close-up at this side all right so we have to go down here and and loosen up the reverse idler on this side reverse idler uh, screws are down here I'm gonna loosen those up and we'll be able to wiggle both the input and output shaft out so let's hop to that right, so these two bolts right here one and two hold in the bracket um, that holds in the reverse idler gear so uh, unscrew these And uh, these require a socket uh, 10, 10 millimeter. All right, so that's that one. So now, we're just gonna rock this bit back and forth. Okay, so now we should be able to rock this a little bit back and forth to be able to get this reverse idle gear bracket out. So here's the reverse idle gear bracket. No, out. Let's get the washer. There's three bolts here I need to take off. So let's do that. Stay tuned. All right, so after removing those three bolts, I was able to pull out the reverse idler gear and this this one looks like I mean they all look like they could use replacing but I don't know I need to verify that with you know someone that knows how these things are supposed to be at least for the first time and then I obviously would know how to do it here going forward uh, so with that out of the way I can now lift both the output and input shaft out of the uh, casing and simply separate them. They're pretty heavy, so I'm gonna set them down. Or at least try to. All right, so with all that out of the way, here's your look at the empty casing that I will uh, clean and probably paint. Uh, not sure yet, and I'm gonna do on that part, but I might clean and paint it. But what's in question here is input shaft, and according to uh, the clutch masters representative this bit is what was a problem with uh, the transmission transmission mounting like it's supposed to let's get a little close-up here on the input shaft insert and like to me, this doesn't look like it's bad, like to me, but like I said, someone else will be able to tell. But what looks bad is the gears. Um, there seems like there's a lot of wear on the gears, They're not even sharp really. I can rub my fingers across them without getting hurt. And like the bearings and everything could use some love. So I may have to just get all the, I think these are, these come standard with it on the kit. But I may have to get these right here, whatever those are called. See if I can get synchronizer rings. Um, but I'm gonna take it into a shop and a transmission shop and see if they can help point me in the right direction. Anyway, there's that. Let me set this down easy and see if any of these gears are still good. Because they're still good, I might wanna, I might wanna, you know, reuse some of those. Uh, or is it better just to go ahead and replace them all? But we'll see. Anyway, so that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, this is probably going to be a part two 
or three series mainly because it's dealing with one of the major components of the car I'm gonna start working on that pretty soon as soon as I get all this stuff cleaned up and out of the way I'll pull that um, engine out and start trying to figure out what's going on and catalog all these bolts and gears and everything uh, tidy up the place because the, the garage is back dirty again so I need to tidy it up and uh, we'll be back full swing to get this car back up and running because I need something running right now um, so I can start the next project anyway if you like this kind of content don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel uh, I do have an Instagram check me out on Instagram it's focus underscore hands um, and I'll put that right here so you can see it uh, if you would like to you know donate to the channel please feel free no pressure uh, definitely does help keep these bills going and uh, here pretty soon I'll be releasing some new stuff uh, I got some merch that's about to drop got some new hats got my icon stuff done uh, so hopefully you all like that I got a new uh, Greyhound clothing line come out t-shirts hats sweaters kind of thing so you know stay stay tuned for that and some giveaways got some giveaways coming up here once I hit that a thousand subscribers uh, got a lot of stuff coming to the channel so appreciate every, each and every one of you uh, it's been for the last few videos it's been nothing but disaster <laughs> uh with the bills and where i thought that i would be by now you know ro rotating and rolling flipping and gripping the wheel in these streets yet i'm still riding the bike and that is sad but this content definitely hopefully will help myself and anyone else needing to do this uh and in the future check out david patience episode uh, on this, he does a really, really good job on breaking down uh, this whole process. If you didn't learn from this episode, please go watch his. He he definitely taught me what I know uh, now. And basically, I did everything that he did to get this all uh, broken apart. So, with that said, Focus Tans, signing off. Peace.